So welcome to part three of the Anarchy Cart build. Now the first thing I want everybody to go and do is go onto the Gov website. And the reason for that is if you type in MSVA, you're gonna get the whole manual for how to put one of these on the road. We are guiding you through it and everything that you're gonna need for this specification. But if there's something you're confused about or something you wanna alter, then that is the Bible. That is where you need to go for all of these rules and regulations. So jump online and go and print that off first thing. The next thing we're gonna have a little recap on as well, which is in the first two episodes, are brakes. Now, these carts need to have brakes on all four corners. So they can be hand operated or foot operated, but you need to be able to activate the brakes without taking your hands off the steering controls. So one of the hand devices for the front brakes is perfectly acceptable, or you can do a double master cylinder and link the brakes into your foot pedal. The next thing that we've already spoken about is a handbrake. So make sure that your car has a handbrake. That needs to be attached on nice and firm and lock any one of the four wheels. How we did it in the earlier episodes though, we've had it so it just locks the rear wheels. So let's do a quick recap on the lights as well. Now the lights need to be 35 centimetres off the floor for your indicators. Your tail and stop lamp needs to be 25 centimetres off the ground. And with that, we've actually included the number plate light as well, but that's in the earlier episodes. The first one we're gonna start on today though is actually your main headlight. Now on this, because it is narrower than 130 centimetres, then you can get away with a single lamp in the middle. This needs to be 50 centimetres off the floor and this needs to also have a main and also a dip function. Side light is not a requirement for this size of vehicle, but this vehicle has got it as well because I thought why not wire it up while it's there. So the next thing we're going to talk about is mirrors. Now mirrors on this are really important. It does have to have mirrors for this size of vehicle. Again, if you go back to your MSVA document, which is on the Gov website, you'll be able to go through the measurements and work it out. But what I did is because it's very confusing, I based mine on a quad bike. Now the quad bike has two different ways of doing it. It either has them just in front of the steering on the handlebars, or I've even seen one of them where it was right on the front bull bar at the front. This doesn't have a bull bar, so what I've done is copied the measurements off the quad because it was the same width, looked at how far they were away from my hands, and then I've used the width of that. And this has gone straight through the MSDA. The other thing to note on this is, these mirrors are E-marked and C-marked. We mentioned that again in the earlier ones. If everything's E-marked, it saves them going through all of the measurements and checking whether these are actually road compliant or not. So these are all good to go. So the other thing to go through again, which is mentioned in the earlier episodes, are wheels and tires. Now we are actually running six inch wheels on these. And because of the brakes on the front, we've had to use gearbox cart wheels all the way around. The reason for that is these have three bolts in the center and then the tires themselves are actually off an LT50 quad. So they are E-marked again. Now E-marked tires and road legal tires is everything for one of these because there are not a lot of them around. We're also looking at other tire manufacturers and other sizes and we will be featuring those later on because we've got another manufacturer we're gonna try out for these. But for now, LT50 tires and you can't go wrong. Right, so it's time for MOTing your cart, but don't rush out and MOT it straight away. And the reason is there are two ways to put these on the road. And these two ways will depend on your cart. And as well, the MOT stage is what dictates it from there. So if your cart is older than 10 years old and you can get a manufacturer's letter confirming the chassis, then you can go this route. If you can't get that, then I'll show you later on in the video the other way to do it. Now, what we've done with this cart is we went to the manufacturer. Now, the manufacturer wrote us a lovely letter about what chassis this had on it. There doesn't need to be a lot of information on there, but because it is the manufacturer's letter, they were able to authenticate the chassis. Now, that means that they were able to tell us the model, the year, the age of the frame, and that's what the DVLA wanted to know. Now with that simple letter, this could then go this route. It also, for this route, has to be over 10 years old. So if you're within that 10 year frame, you still can't go this route. So this one actually was registered as a 1994 frame, because that's how old it is. 
Now, with that route, you then go for your MOT. Now, your MOT, when you go in there, they will go through the cart. Now, I would advise you as well, before you put a mark on this, ask them to do a pre-MOT. Now, the pre-MOT is gonna be really, really important. We'll discuss that again later, because you wanna work out all the little kinks before this gets registered. In my eyes, what you do not want is to register this for the first time with a failed MOT. It's just not the way to do it. Get it right, register it once. So go and do your pre-MOT. Now, from that, your MOT will dictate the name of the cart. Now, don't get fancy with the name. This is where it's got to be exactly as the manufacturer stated it is. Spellings, name, model, everything because if it's not the DVLA will reject it and it will be a nightmare to correct your paperwork at a later date so try and stay next to your MOT if possible explain to him what's going on so make a model exactly as the manufacturer states the year exactly as manufacturer states mileage history on this you can put no odometer so there's no um, actual speed recording on this and no obviously you're going to be recording speed as in how fast you're traveling, but how many miles doesn't need to be recorded on this. Once you've done that, you've got your pass certificate. You're then going to do a NOVA form. Now this is my approval on my NOVA form. So what you do is you then get your MOT certificate, you get your manufacturer's letter, you fill out a NOVA report, you need your driver's license, and you also need a letter dated within the last three months to your address with your name and everything matching on. So that's five pieces of paper that you're going to send away. You send these away to HMRC. That coupled with, and this is piece of paper number six, that coupled with a original receipt of purchase. Now this isn't the original for when it was brand new, this is your receipt of purchase. Now this particular car I bought on eBay. So all I had to do was print off my eBay receipt showing how much I paid for the car. This can be a handwritten receipt when you purchase the car as well, so you don't need to go too in depth, but it needs to show how much you paid for it. The reason all of this is so important, HMRC are now gonna decide if you need to pay tax on this. Now with the paperwork I've had, which is the original letter from manufacturer, it's stated on there that the VAT was paid for this when it entered the country. This being an Italian frame, it showed that the VAT was paid when it came over, and it showed how much I paid at 500 pounds, which was under the threshold anyway. So you should be able to do the exact same if you're going this route. So send all your paperwork away to HMRC. Fingers crossed, they don't charge you any additional VAT for it, but they might, but they're gonna charge that on what you paid for it. So it's gonna be a very negligible amount. Now the Nova system is not quite right for registering a vehicle for the first time, but it's a system that's there. It's a system that was created to pay VAT when you import a vehicle, like if you're bringing it over from the States, to show that you're actually paying the VAT when it comes in. This system is great though, because it sends it away, it has a look at how much you owe, and hopefully it's nothing, and then the paperwork comes back. Now, once you've got your Nova receipt, like mine is here, it then gives you a Nova reference number. Now, this then can be coupled with a V55 form. Now, I'm gonna show you, after both methods, how to fill out a V55 form. Now, the V55 form, is what you send away to the DVLA. Now the DVLA want to see all of the paperwork we just had with the Nova. So manufacturers, MOT, driver's license, they want to see a V55 form, Nova application, original receipt, and one more. Oh yeah, Nova confirmation report, coupled with your V55 form. So what you do is fill this form out and you post all of that away. Now. As well, this is where you've got to pay tax or road tax on your cart. Now, I've checked the tax class on this. This is 320 cc, and for the weight class, for six months is 99 pounds on this. Now, you have to pay the tax at this point. This is your road tax, you can't get out of it, and that's it. So, 99 pounds plus an additional check for 55 pounds, which is to register it. So in total, that's gonna to be 154 pounds, and then you send away all of your paperwork. 
you can't say in cash, it's gotta be a banker's draft or a check and you can send it away and everything goes away like that. So that is method number one. Now remember, the only way you could use this if your cart is over 10 years old and you have a manufacturer's receipt. Now this manufacturer's receipt is really hard to get hold of. So don't jump the gun with this, take your time, have a go. If it isn't, you've got to go the MSVA route. So here we go, method number two. This is the MSVA route. This is the full way of putting one of these on the road. Now you would use this if, let's say you've got a brand new cart, so it's not 10 years old. You may have a manufacturer's letter with it, but that's no use to you because if it's within 10 years old, you still need to go through an MSVA. If it's older than 10 years old and you can't get a manufacturer's letter. Now these manufacturer's letters are really hard to come by. A lot of the manufacturers aren't interested in old carts. So this will be the most traveled route by far. Now, go to your MOT. What you do from the MOT is you register the name. Now with this, you can register any name because you're doing it as a single vehicle approval, then you can call it whatever you want. You could call it Billy's Bad Boy Quad if you want to. You can call it My Big Race Car. But what I would advise to do is stick to the program a little bit. If you've got a Tony cart, register it as a Tony cart. If you've got a shifter cart, register it as a shifter cart. Or you can go the most traveled route we're hoping is calling it an anarchy cart. And the reason I would say to go this route is we've already got these insured and on the road. The DVLA are aware that these are getting built and so are the insurance companies. So it's gonna make everything a lot easier as you go through. If it says cart on it, and let's say the police are behind you and they reg check it, it will say cart on there. If it doesn't, they're then gonna look at what's happened. Why hasn't this got a name which says cart in it? And what it does is it opens up this big precipice of things that they could look into and start to cause you issues. So name it something with carting, it'll make it easier. So that's number one. You've now got yourself an MOT certificate. Yay, I can go on the road. No, you can't. This is just stage one. So what you do next is you go on to the DVLA and DVSA website and you register or book in your MSVA. Now, I rang up my local test centre and I managed to book a pre-test with them. They were really helpful with this. It was just a 15 minute slot. And what I did is I took this up and they had a look over it. So they looked over the cart and they had a look if there was anything that they weren't happy with. Now they did find a couple of things. Now, one thing they found was little bolts and stuff here. So I put plastic little caps on them because there were little edges on them. So they weren't happy with those. Also, I hadn't got my chain guards on the back, so I put my chain guards on. Now, these were little things, but they would result in a fail. So they went round, they were so, so helpful as well. And to be honest, I think they were quite happy that I kind of booked in for a bit of a pretest because they gave them the chance to kind of get used to it and have a look over it and point out the things that they weren't happy with. Because it is subjective, if you've got somebody who isn't happy with one thing, it might be subjective for somebody else. And they went around and checked all the little things that they wanted to see. So I went back home and rectified these. Then I booked in for a proper MSVA test. Now they will be looking for sharp edges, they're looking for e marks things, they're looking for ground clearance, they're looking for all these different things. Now with both of these, take off your bumpers and side pods, because as we will discuss later in the MOT as well, these will scrub on them and be having this as an open wheeled vehicle, it goes into an easier classification to get through. Add these back on after, they're not gonna cause any issues when you're out there on the road, but it's easier. If you can create less things to go wrong, that's what they want to see. They wanna see a nice simple vehicle that they don't have issues with. Um, the test didn't last very long and it went through. So yay, you've got your MSVA certificate. Well, in two weeks, because they post it out to you. So they contact the DVLA, they put a registration on it. Uh, they don't put a registration on, but they start to create that path. So you've got then your MSVA paperwork. So that comes back through the post. Then when you've got your paperwork through the post, it's NOVA registration time. So what is a NOVA? Now a NOVA certificate is 
notification of vehicle arrival and this is into the UK so there isn't really a system for the new vehicles but what there is is a very good system for registering imported vehicles so you fill out a Nova certificate so the Nova is going to HMRC and that describes basically whether the car has had VAT paid on it and that's like an import VAT now with this stage you need to fill out a few things so you've got MOT pass certificate, MSVA paperwork. You've also got your original bill of receipt. So this is whether you bought it on eBay, if it's a handwritten receipt because you bought it off your mate, but it needs to have how much it was on there and the date. The next thing is you've got your driver's license. That needs to go away with it. And also you need a letter dated within the last three months to go away with it as well. So there's quite a chunk of paperwork to go away with it. You send all of that away to HMRC. Now at that stage, they will assess whether this needs to have VAT applied onto it or not. Now for the classification this was in, now we paid 500 pound for each of our anarchy carts. And with that, it was under the classification. They can see that it was all fair. They could see that these had been in the UK for a long time. So there was no issues. So they then send a letter back. Now that letter, is your Nova certificate. They do send it via email as well, which is really helpful. And you've then got a Nova receipt to go with it. And with that, it's really helpful because you've got this extra paper trail. It's showing the name on there. And again, everything's starting to tie together. So you've got this great big paperwork trail. The next thing you do is you fill out your V55 form. Now the V55 form we're gonna go through in a moment and talk about what you do and don't need to fill out to register your cart for the first time. Um, it's not as complex as it looks and we'll go through that in a moment. Now, when you send away your V55 stuff, you need MOT certificate, MSBA paperwork, Nova paperwork, original bill of receipt. You also need your driver's license and this is where you'll pay tax for the first time. This is where it starts to cost. So on these classifications, you're gonna pay 99 pounds in six months worth of road tax and a 55 pound registration fee. Make those in two separate, either bank transfer, uh, sorry, um, bankers drafts or in checks because they need to go to two different departments when they get there. So put them on two different checks. Then you send it away with your V55 form. So all of that then goes away. This process can take six to eight weeks. Make sure you've checked for spelling mistakes, make sure all the paperwork's filled out, and we're gonna go through the V55 form now. Right, so I brought the cart down today to Richard, and the reason we've done that is because he used to be an MOT tester. So he's gonna know all of these little pitfalls and stuff that somebody would look for on this go-kart. This has already passed its MOT, but the MOT at where it was, he didn't really uh, want to be on camera, so which is fair enough. The other thing as well is, make sure that you book this in for a pre-MOT. Now, the reason that is so important is this is gonna freak your MOT around. This is gonna be something like he's never seen before, and he may wanna do his homework on doing this classification. The other thing is, the MOT station you go to needs to be able to do these. It needs to have a decelerometer on site, so you've gotta make sure they can do like pods and buggies and that kind of thing, because this won't fit in the brake rollers. Then the final bit is make sure you take your side pods and your front bumper off. The reason that's so important on this is go-karts do rub on the edges of these on full lock side to side. It's a normal thing for a go-kart, but you're not allowed it for the MOT. So just unbolt your side pods and your front bumper. So Rich, tell us what you would look for on an MOT. What would you go through? So a rough go through on this would be running through the lights. So just making sure they're all working. All <laughs> Security of the, of the controls, running down steering wheel tight, um, running down the column. You've got joints here that connect the, you know, the steering to the front end. Yeah. We'll say with this as well, go karts are absolutely amazing for this because the whole end, front end, sorry, is rose jointed. Yeah. So they are. If Moist, there's a bit of play, yeah. it just means that you need to actually nip it up a bit further. So. It's a great reason to go and have pre-MOT because when we did a pre-MOT with this, with the other MOT, yeah, he just said, you need to tighten this, you need to tighten that. And we just kind of went round and made it road safe. Yeah. yeah, so running from steering, checking your kingpins top and bottom, making sure there's no play, wheel bearings. So a bit tricky on these, but have a bit of a feel. 
and then just running around controls making sure brake throttle ain't loose things like that running further back we've got a handbrake which you've put on this haven't you yeah um, so making sure that's working so all working nicely moving back obviously seats in not going to drop out engines on secure no signs of leak fuel lines are okay no signs of leak from there same with the rear moving back you've got wheel bearings in the rear making sure that's all fixed down tight rear bumper i suppose sort of comes into it so another body fixing make sure it's on and done and then obviously running down to your rear brakes make sure there's no um leaks you know in the calipers tight things like that it's not exactly the same as a car but the fundamentals are there yeah so. the one thing is that we found when it went for mot is because there's not a lot here to go wrong, he had to go around it two or three times, and he really did spend a lot of time on it because an MOT test is 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so it was one of those cases where he had to really go over and over and over and over it. Um, the other thing is the chain guards. These chain guards have to be on for an MOT. You're not allowed to change from the top, so make sure your chain guards on the back. They don't actually have an emissions test on them. <laughs> so, again, it's another thing that these don't need. So, yeah, no emissions test um, for these, and there's no noise restriction on them either. One, this is the weight class, but two, these are actually stamped on the engine, the noise. So, as long as you haven't got silly exhaust on the back of these, you're pretty much got free on that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much as is. Obviously, battery wants to be secured with a nice, nice battery strap around that. Um, but yeah, it's not as in-depth as a car MOT, but it's, um, yeah, it's going to put a lot of MOT tests on edge MOT in the first one. But, yeah, cool. Yeah, so I think safe and secure is probably the best thing, yeah. isn't it? Safe if, and secure yeah. and, and right is yeah. what you want. If it rattles or it's loose, make it tight. Um, in previous episodes as well, we did say all your cables, pipes, um, and all your electrics, make sure that you cable tie them every 10 centimetres because you'd be looking out for loose cables and stuff, wouldn't you? You don't want to be captain the legs or anything like that, or anything like that. So, yeah, other than that, it's pretty straightforward to be honest. So, um, thank you for having a piece of us about that, Rich, and guiding us through it a little bit from an MOT as point of view. So, as an MOT, it would terrify you this while we need. Yeah, it'd be, um, it'd be different to do that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> Yeah, all right. Nice one. It. So yeah, now we can move on to the next stage, which, as I've stated earlier in this episode, is either going to be your MSVA or continuing down the paperwork line. Right, so Nova form. So how do you fill out a Nova form? Now, these are a very simple form, but the information needs to be quite precise on these. So the first page, you just throw away. So we're going on to part one continues, purchase of details. So what you do is put in your full name, Obviously, you're not going to be a business, then you put in your private address just underneath. There's no VAT registration number, so again, you leave that blank. Effective date of VAT registration, so with that, again, you leave blank. Is the purchaser bringing the vehicle into the UK? No. So when you tick no, that's because you're declaring that the vehicle is already here. It's already been here for quite some time, so you're not importing it at this stage. Then you've got your phone number. Make sure you enter your phone number here. You may think you're being clever by not, but when these were first getting done, HMRC did phone me up and they just said, by the way, you've missed out one of these bits on the boxes. Do you mind if I pop it in? And that, that was fine. It was really nice them to phone me up and do that. If you don't put your mobile number, you're not giving them the chance to fix that. Also your email address. Again, don't leave this blank. If they've got any issues, they can email you and contact you. You can have the form sent back, correct it and ping it straight back to them. Again, HMRC were really helpful with this, so don't treat them as the enemy. They can be so helpful. Next down, are you bringing the vehicle to the UK? No. So you leave that as no. Full name of supplier. So this should be on your receipt. Who did you buy it from and the address where you got it from as well. So you've got the seller's name and address just there. Is the supplier that registered? The chances are not unless you're buying it brand new. So just put it as no. That is it for that side of the form. So, we're going on to part three. What type of vehicle is it registered as? So, pop in there, just tick motorcycle, because this goes under quads and quadricycles, which comes under motorbikes. So then, move over to 20D. So, enter in there. 
for instance, Tony Cast, Pro Cast, Senior. You also put type road, so you can now be registered as road. And then it says style. So this is gonna come under as a quadricycle, as we said before. Engine size and petrol. Once you've got that, that is that filled out that page. So the next one is part three and part four. You don't need that. Next is part five. Now this is more about the vehicle. So on here, you've got the VIN number. So enter the VIN number up here. Current vehicle registration, you'll leave blank because you haven't got a reg yet. Date that the vehicle arrived. Now with this, you're not going to have the date that the vehicle arrived in the UK. But what I would say is the year of manufacture. From your VIN number, you should be able to determine the vehicle manufacturer, what year it was made. I just put in 0101 and then the year that it came or was created because that is also when it would have been imported to the UK. Then we've got number 26. Do you know the vehicle that it was first registered? That is your MOT date. So when your car has been MOT'd, pop that in. So yes, and then you're gonna pop the date in underneath as well. So we've got country of first registration, it's gonna be the UK, and then you've got your date of registration, which is underneath. Mileage at time of purchase, NA, because these don't have um, mileage recorded on them. Mileage units, it's gonna be miles, so just tick miles, because that again links it into being the UK, so if you do wanna put a speedometer, it knows it's ready to be UK registered. Uh, left or right and drive, this being central, don't tick either. Then we've got date vehicle was first made available. So that is your purchase date that you would have on your receipt. Do you have a purchase invoice? Tick yes, you need your receipt at this moment. Don't try and send this off without the receipt from purchasing it. Then we come down to purchase invoice date. So when did you purchase it? Enter the details there. Then you've got price paid for the vehicle. Just put this in round numbers, no decimal points, and write how much you paid for it. So I've written on here, number box 37, 500. Are you claiming relief against your VAT? No. They will deal with that. Don't try and be smart, try and duck and dive. It should be exempt anyway. If you've got to pay it on, you're paying VAT on 500 pounds, which at worst is going to be 100 pounds. That's very worst. Then you've got currency used, GBP, Great British Pounds, and that's it for that side of the form. The last bit is the declaration. This is whether you agree with everything you've written on your own form. So on here you're going to write your name, you're also going to write private individual in status. The re reason it's private individual is they know that you're not a VAT registered business. VAT registered business is going to have to jump through different loopholes to you. You've got signature and the date of signature just there. And that is it. That is all of your night over form filled out. Right, so what we're going to talk through now is your V55 5 form. Now, when you first see this form, it's got loads of empty boxes and it can honestly scare you away with this. So let's talk through what you need to put in each box. So when it comes to tax class, these are going to be under a PLG tax class. Then underneath, you tick the registration and tax form and enter in there 99 pounds. That is how much it is gonna be for six months worth of tax on this. The next box down is your manufacturer. So this one is down as a Tony cart. Next down is make, that is the make and model. So we've got in there on this one a pro cart. Again, put your own in for this. Next one down is model. This is a senior, so put in senior. Next is type of body. Now these are gonna come under a heavy quadricycle. Now depending on your weight class and how heavy your cart is and also what engine size, you'll know whether you're gonna go light or heavy. This having a 320cc engine with the two of them combined goes under heavy. But quadricycle is all you need to put in for that box. The next down is wheel pan. These are a two axle rigid. So. That is again what a quadricycle comes under, two axles and rigid. The next one down is colour, so this is down as blue. So I put in blue because of the body panels on this one and the frame is going to be painted blue. That is again, it depends what your car is. The other one that was registered is down as blue. 
The next is, and this is the real tricky bit. Now, this comes under type approval. What you're gonna put in here is exempt enduro. That is really, really important for this bit. So that is box 11 exempt enduro. Now, that classification will cover this for whether it's been through an MSBA or whether it is going under your manufacturer's classification as well. So the rest of these boxes all down the bottom here, don't worry about, it. leave them all empty apart from one. The one is the year of manufacture. So in there you put in, which is box 27, put in your year date. The rest of this form you're gonna leave blank. Then up here, date of which tax is to run. So what I would advise you to do if you're starting this um, like the start of the month, put it in for the start of next month or even the month after of when you're intending to use it. That'll give you time in case anything goes wrong. So don't start the tax class like two weeks ago, you're just gonna burn your own tax up. Then you've got fuel type. So in here, which is box 31, I've put in petrol. Then put in your VIN number, engine number and cylinder capacity. That is it, the first page of the V55 form. So there's a load of it that's empty. I know it looks really daunting, but it isn't. So let's go over to page two. So on here, this is a really simple page. Put in your name, put in your address, and then put in your date of birth, which is just down here on box 64. When it comes to mileage, put in zero just all zeros across there because these aren't going to record mileage unless yours does but again it should be all zero unless it's been from two clocks and miles up then down here signature and date that is your v55 dash form filled out finished job done so get that one sent away right then guys so that is it for this episode and i am sorry it's been information overload on this but unfortunately it is necessary and we had to tackle it at some point so for now, guys, that is it. Join us on part four, and you can come out driving with us on the Anarchy Cars.